Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your oh local God, governments. Gather together here in your presence. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Give us courage, dear Lord. Help us to do the business of Alamance County and its citizens. Help us to do it in the right way that benefits your kingdom, dear Lord. Benefits our, our people. We ask, Father, for uh, peace in your presence. Time to get all the, all the business of the county taken care of. We ask you to watch over us and, and keep our county safe. We thank you so much, dear Lord, for the safety that we had this weekend and uh, limited damage. And we thank you, Lord, for the return to power for those who have lost power. We ask, Father, that you be with us this day. <coughs> we ask these things in Jesus' powerful and holy name. Amen. 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 Join me in the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Move the flag, so I was looking at the wrong spot. <laughs> I think everybody gets the same thing. Okay. We have the agenda in front of us. Uh, do we have a motion as to the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And Bruce, you're right. The, the uh, PA system, I'm hearing an echo. We. So. <laughs> It's a brand new system, it has some AI, and we'll be controlling it as we go. We've got two pretty different people on it. Excellent. We have two uh, public comments. We have Sally Gordon, United Way. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. I'm actually Robin Winteringham with the United Way. <laughs> Sally Gordon, though, my colleague is here, and our director, <laughs> Heidi Norwick, as well. Um, thank you for the chance to be here this morning. The reason for my visit, I wanted to invite you all to our housing forum. On Wednesday, October the 19th, we'll be hosting a housing forum at Ebenezer United Church of Christ. It goes from 8.30 until 2.30. The purpose of the forum is to allow citizens of Alamance County to have a chance to attend, to talk about what their concerns are about housing, and try to determine what our housing priorities should be. In preparation for this event, I've done a fair amount of research, and I've also made it my practice to visit eviction court on Wednesday. Some of you have probably been there and experienced eviction court. I was just stunned. I have a colleague who had told me over and over, you won't believe how many people get evicted every week. You won't believe. So I thought, okay, I'll just go myself. And I will tell you, um, in the days that I've been, there have been lots of evictions. In fact, this past week, just in the morning section, 67 families were evicted from their homes. Um, I know your mind may be running to, well, why are they being evicted? But there are all kinds of reasons why people get evicted, but nonetheless, those families left, went home, gathered all the people who live with them, which could have been children, spouse, elderly parents, sick relative and had to vacate the highest number that i've heard and i wasn't actually in court that day but magistrate holland told me this 109 families were evicted we're just not that big of a county that's a significant number of our citizens who are becoming unhoused whether through their fault not their fault it's just a lot of people who need housing so we want to talk about those issues give everyone there a voice the event's gonna be different. It's not one of those dress up speaker, chit chat speaker, go home. It's called open forum. Everyone will have a chance to speak. Our facilitators are coming, uh, trained facilitators are coming to run the meeting. And we hope that it'll give us a really good compass for where we need to be going. So I brought little cards for you all. Um, I'm not sure if I should give them to you personally. Can I do that? Can I do that? 
Um, if you like, we ask that you register if you can, because we don't want anybody to not have lunch, that's for sure. Um, you can use the QR code on the front, or you can, um, we'll help you with a different type of registration if you'd like. But we do hope that you'll come. It'll be a great chance to hear things about Alamance County that maybe you haven't. Even though I've lived here a long time, I learn something new every day. And I certainly hope that you all will join us. Do you have any questions that I can answer for you? If you want to put those out so that others can gather the cards, you want to do that. Absolutely. Can you leave, may I leave a stack here? Yes, thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for your time. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Walker. Well, my understanding y'all met on the TARP law. My understanding that you, uh, we already have a TARP law, right? State does. Do what? The state does. State does. Okay. We need to get an ordinance here in Alamance County that y'all will pass a TARP law here in Alamance County. And uh, thank you. Mr. Carter said something about y'all was been talking about it and all that. So, are you ready to vote? <laughs> I mean, it's been about six months. <laughs> Somebody ought to be ready to vote. We haven't had the conversation yet, so. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead with your conversation then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The way you say it, Mr. Walker. <laughs> uh, I'll just say it like it is. I appreciate that. Tell, you, tell it like it is. Don't hurt. Tell the truth. <laughs> Waiting. Yeah. And uh, I come down pitch four this week, and boxes laying all up down pitch four, mattresses, everything else. Where they blowed off the truck, and where they went down through there with no tarp. And. I think it's time to vote on an ordinance here in Alamance County and let the law take its place, give them a ticket. Or at least put it in Alamance News or somewhere, Boston News. There will be a fine if they go down to the landfill without a tarp on. And they get caught going down the road and trash blowing out. That's what I got to say. Yeah, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Do we have a motion as to our consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Motion second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. We have uh, minutes. In fact, that's completed in our consent. We'll do it. <clears throat> Colonel Chen, you are next. Thank you for this opportunity to provide an update on the balloon festival and the old saying about a picture. It's better than a thousand words. Well, I have a short movie, so if you <laughs> direct your attention to the screens.
as I've stated at the previous meeting, the purpose of the balloon festival was to raise funds for the Chestnut Ridge campus. And as you saw in the last video there, we have a well uh, on the mountain. We had to go down 460 feet, but we got water. <laughs> but all in all, it was a successful return of the balloon festival to Alamance County. And I thank you, uh, the county and to the park and rec office for the great support we got. And as I've said before, you know, we try to leave any venue where we have ha held an event better than we left it or than when we arrived. And I'd like to provide you what we did at the park to prepare it for the balloon festival, but also for the long-term benefit of the citizens of Graham uh, in Alamance County. You know what your uh, flow is on, the, on your well? Uh, five gallons a minute. That's good. Thank you. Thanks. Alcovets, as an organization, will pay for all the material that was involved there at the park and then EP Gates uh, donated their labor and material for that and so as you see before you uh, we spent just over thirteen thousand uh, dollars so but again it was a great event everybody had a great time uh, the weather was a challenge but even then we had a great turnout uh, and I'd like to propose to the commissioners that the second weekend of September become the annual balloon festival here in Alamance County. I'd like to make such a motion. I'll second it. In addition to this, you will explain to the audience what this invoice is. Okay, this invoice is for the installation of electrical outlets and such so that uh, <clears throat> if you've gone to the state fair or such and if there are uh, food vehicles what do you hear the sound of generators well what we've done out at the park is we've put drops so that now vendors go in they plug into the electrical grid and so you do not have the background noise of generators so now when the, the, there's entertainment on the stage, they're not being drowned out by that noise. All the vendors can plug in. So whenever there's an event now at the park and it's there at the, the uh, farmhouse, it's wired and it's ready. And we also took care of putting a uh, service out at the, uh, the, the, bat, uh, the bathroom there and did some rewiring within the house so there's an external outlet at the farmhouse so that if you're using an outlet it's GFI so now we won't have any issues of someone getting accidentally shocked but again <clears throat> it's our long-term vision that the balloon festival will be an annual event a destination event not only here in Alamance County but in the state and as I mentioned before we had someone come up from Atlanta for the balloon festival uh, and so we'd like to make this uh, something that everyone can look forward to and again the funds raised go toward building the campus on Chestnut Ridge and in addition to this um, the total that you guys have donated to Alamance County and the park is in excess of close to $14,000 Yes, sir. In materials, in electrical service, and uh, gravel, all kinds of things of that sort. Yes, sir. And that's what this invoice represents. But additionally, you paid to the county a sum of money. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Four thousand dollars. Right. So the the county came out a winner, uh, roughly fourteen thousand dollars plus in cash alone, four thousand dollars. Yes, sir. By holding this event on on the county property. 
we want to say thank you. Definitely, absolutely. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'll add too that I was I lived in uh, Iredell County for about five years, and uh, they had an annual balloon event there, and it was it was amazing. Uh, uh, I think it would be a real attraction for the citizens of Alamance County and for bringing people in from. Uh, it'll be a destination event for Alamance County and bring a lot of people here. Yes, sir. I know that even though we had pretty bad weather, <laughs> we had uh, yeah, the uh, media flight Friday morning that was not, because of fog, not able to take place. Uh, then you had the flight Friday afternoon. Beautiful flight. I personally flew roughly 22 miles. So I flew all the way out of Alamance County and way, way over into Guilford County. Uh, beautiful landing it was fast but uh, and every all 21 balloons flew that evening just a wonderful event uh, Saturday was pretty much rained out although you folks and I'm looking at Chuck, Chuck as well you had all of your concerts you had something ongoing on the property continually even though the rainage <coughs> prohibited a lot of the activities from occurring uh, and then Saturday uh, excuse me, Sunday. Um, I think most of the balloons inflated Sunday afternoon, so the uh, folks got to see a, what I call a blow. Right. We made the attempt to fly, but the weather, you know, balloons are subject to the weather, and it was just when they were getting ready, a cloud moved over the, the park and stayed there, so they couldn't launch. <laughs> but, uh, and more importantly, local businesses underwrote the balloon festival. And uh, so it's, the festival was representative of, of all the folks within the county, the businesses and such. Uh, and that's the way it should be. Uh, but again, thank you very much for your support. And we look forward to the coming years. Uh, and like I said, we now have water, and the next step will uh, begin putting in the septic system and then be begin constructing the chapel. Tell us a little bit about that site itself, if you will. If you yes, sir. Wondering. Well, Chestnut Ridge was owned by Pete Chestnut, and Pete was a veteran, and we befriended him because he was. And the acts of kindness, uh, last July, Pete was dehydrated and out of concern we went up and the EMT went up and Pete would not let them take him to the hospital but Richard Shevlin and I were there and we persuaded Pete to let us take him and that act of kindness resulted in him deciding to donate the land to us in his will and regrettably in October Pete passed away uh, we had the groundbreaking ceremony which you were there and he is interned up there. <clears throat> but the idea of Chestnut Ridge, it's going to be a, a veteran's respite in that Mr. Cruz, who was then the director of the, the VA at Durham, instructed, he says, the VA will take care of an active duty member, of, of the, and they take care of you if you're retired. But there's nothing in between. And the, purpose of Chestnut Ridge is a, it's a respite. It's not a permanent housing for veterans. But if a veteran should, ha should experience an episode triggered by some event, they can call because we're going to have 12 park model two bedroom homes up there. They can call. We'll check them in. They can stay till they get their feet back on the ground. And when they leave, it'll be at no cost to them. And so it's open to any veteran. And if a veteran wants to just come up and spend the night or such, then we'll just ask them for a donation to help in the maintenance of the facility. But again, it's a respite and it's not a permanent residence. But we're gonna have diversion buildings where veterans can do other things or be taught painting, archery, uh, whatever. It's just, if you haven't been to, to the top of, Fire, of Bass Mountain on Fire Tower Road, it's the most peaceful setting because it borders the new Cane Creek Reserve. How many acres do you have on that portion? It's seven acres. Seven. 
and it joins, as you said, a lot of county property, yes. which makes it usable to you as with, with the county property. Exactly. Wonderful. I just have a question, just because. Um, if you have someone that's going there for respite, that's really struggling with PTSD, their marriage is busted up, they've got some kind of issue going on, like so many guys and girls that have tough deployments that come back here, make me end up homeless. Are you going to have crisis management up there 24-7? Like a counselor our, for them? If there's a need, mm -hmm. we were told by Mr. <coughs> Mr. Cruz, we could contact the VA. In Durham? Right. So you won't have any on-site person? No. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair. I'm sure, I just want to add a few things to that. So most decompression diversion uh, facilities, from talking to Mr. Cruz, it's one of the things you sign up. So what got us thinking about this is we had like multiple vets that are part of us now that are joined us that we see them fly out at a given week at any given time for one week. And they fly somewhere where it's War Horse in Maryland. So there are Warriors on Water in, in Georgia. They've got Wake on Water in Georgia, Warriors on Water down towards the caves. Then they sign up just to decompress is what it's about. So the thing is, is that's just one week out of a year, but we see these guys signing up for four times a year, okay? Of course, those organizations have these million dollar grants. They cover everything. We're not there. We're a little hometown organization. And our goal is, is not to have it one week, but a swinging door. So basically, if they're having a, a bad night with the spouse or the children, that they can call us up. We can open one of the diversion buildings. We have three buildings, four buildings that we use for diversion. We have visual, musical, and then another visual, which is probably pottery, okay? So the idea, and we've already got vets going up there that are already suffering from this. Some have only been out of the house two times in like the last four years. This gives them an outlet where they can call us. We give them a combination. They go in and all the paint, all the canvases are sitting there. They can sit down and just decompress up there. We already have Vietnam vets that are going up there because we had three picnic tables donated to us. And they're, they, I know for a fact they've already gone up there. I want them laying on the picnic table watching leaves rustle just so he can clear his head out. I don't want a facility up there that you've got to wait to sign up. I want it for our, our people in this county, our vets in this county, that when they feel like they're having a bad night, that they can just go up there and make a phone call and we'll have another vet meeting. Because one thing we have learned from experience of working like 30 some events last year, that I'm not a veteran, he is. I'm not a combat vet. He, I don't know if Bobby's seen it, but one thing we've learned is the combat vets, when they realize that they've got another fellow combat vet, it's like the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, counseling that you see take place. So it's amazing what'll happen at a campfire at night when they'll open up, and some of these guys are further along than the new guy coming in. You know, this didn't start just recently. Right. They called it shell shock. And some of the biggest problems we're having now with the older vets, because they say the older they get, the more time they have on their hands, and they beg for stuff to do every day because they need to keep their mind going because now they're sitting around more and now their lithium intake has gone up and things like that. So it's, it's not like we talked when we talked to Mr. Cruz, there's not a cure for this. At any given time, something can set these guys back off. So we're just trying to build a facility in the county that they can get away and take a breath. And Mr. Chestnut with the land, this started two years prior to him giving it to us. He approached me two years earlier when I, I've known the man, he grew up with my dad, and he had, he had approached me two years earlier about me buying a, chest, a teardrop camper. And so when I got to talking to him, then he threw up about giving the land to us, and I looked at it, and most people would look at it and say they didn't want it. We seen a beautiful piece of land. Two years later, multiple meetings with him, multiple things. He was yelling at me and Bobby because we wouldn't go up there and get it done finally. And so we actually have a handwritten will that we sat down and did and had it notarized because he was determined he, the state of North Carolina wasn't getting his property because nobody wanted it. And so uh, from that it led to this. And we spent, I think it was about 30 some bodies that, over that first weekend trying to get ready for a groundbreaking ceremony. And a lot of y'all attended that meeting. And, and, and unfortunately that was the same day we put him in the ground, his ashes in the ground up there on the mountain because he didn't make it. So uh, it's a sad thing, he didn't get to see it. But the thing is, this that's beautiful about this is his brother, which is from Burlington, good friends with Richard Jones, has moved back into town and goes up there and keeps his mode, and he's a Vietnam vet. So we're seeing a lot of activity up there, and we don't have anything to put anybody in. The first thing that Mr. Chestnut wanted was a chapel. So the blueprints are being finalized this week. 
We've, uh, the well permit, septic tank permit was done. We're actually putting, hopefully we'll start the septic system on Friday or so. Uh, we'll put that in before we actually start doing the foundation and footing. We've had stuff from like the drywall and insulation verbally donated. Any of it that we got going in, they will pay for it and install it. So there's a lot of community involved with this thing up on the mountain and that's what it should be anyway. Somebody had told us, you know, they said, what if you get a big grant? Well, that, that, that deprives us from building relationships and earning trust of these young guys coming by. It doesn't need to be where we hire somebody to do it all. They physically need to have some skin in the game. And this gives us an opportunity to build relationships and earn their trust. And that's what it's about, too. So it's not about the money necessarily. It's about the relationships we're forging along the way. Um, the one other thing I want to bring up is we wasn't aware that we were going to pay and, pay and write at $4,000, and that's fine. You know, we, we don't want the perception we're taking advantage of the county. And that was the thing that I told Randy Carey and I told you, John, that if this did happen, that we would leave the park in better shape than what we came when we showed up. And we did not want, because some of the vets don't want to hear this racket going crazy in their head. That's something you have to think about when you're trying to get the vets out to an event. All this chaotic noise moving on with these engines and stuff. It's a beautiful thing when it was peaceful out there and you could hear the band playing and you could be like 600 foot away. So it was very trank. We, we hung lights from the trees. We made it very where it was usable the whole time. Uh, I think that all the park management and Brian, I think you're very pleased with everything that we've done. We've already had some discussions on things that we need to do next year to make the park even more uh, adequate and more accommodating to this. We're, we don't ever foresee putting more than 20 to 25 balloons, John. You've done this more than me, but we're thinking we want to maintain it at a certain level. Uh, Friday was just like all the food vendors had sold out. On Friday alone, what they plan on doing the whole weekend. So basically it was such a success on Friday and you think with Saturday, we stood out in the rain all day. We canceled one band, thank God we canceled it because it was very expensive, but we made it through the rain. But I went to each event before we left and me and Carson, we took a funny video and sent it, picture and sent it to all the people. Cause we were, me and my son was the last two to left after we were pushing cars out to make sure they wouldn't spin or anything. Minimal damage to the park as far as the rain. And that was a true test. If we could get through a rainy weekend and knock out of the park up, we accomplished something. We stayed off certain fields on Sunday, but the thing about it, I talked to all the vendors, and all the vendors were very well happy, even with Saturday, because people kept showing up in the trolley bus, getting off of the umbrellas, walking around spending money. And so we were like, this is crazy, because we didn't charge no admission on Saturday. Like, there's no admission. If you can get here, and the vendors are sitting here in the rain, then fine, so be it. We put it out there, and we still had bus after bus after bus just randomly uh, just trickling in all day. And all the vendors, and even the food vendors, said this is what they planned on selling on Saturday. And of course, in Sunday, we had a little bit in the morning, and then that afternoon, we really like wanted to go, but the wind would not allow it. But as the day progressed, you know, we had one vet that showed up just as a vendor on Saturday selling stuff. I now have his, you need to go see what he does. It's in the hardware store, in the farm store now. But he showed up, and he was a um, combat vet, 11 years, only discharged medically. And so uh, that morning, I went up, and I was like, you know, because it's kind of overcast, I went on and bought something from him, the nicest piece he had. Of course, I'm going to put it on the wall. It's really good stuff. You've got to see it. And so after that, I, later that day, I was like, you know, when I seen him, he just covered in sweat because the sun had come out. And I said, well, how'd you do? He said, man, we got it handed to us. He said, we sold about everything we brought. So it was such a successful event. And so now we've established a new relationship with another vet that's from another county. So we're kind of excited because I'm hoping we'll see him going to the Veterans Day Festival. But it's been nothing but good stuff from it. I, one other thing that I think you know, one of the media outlets told us this, 38,000 downloads the last week leading up to this event, 38,000. The number one trending thing in the Piedmont and definitely in the triad. Is that not, and our county needed this event just as much as Alcovest needed to do this event. So. It doesn't matter what we made. The thing is, is we got our word out there. That was the biggest thing, and we got a lot of exposure saying what we're trying to do up on the mountain. So that was the biggest thing we're trying to accomplish. So I just appreciate y'all's time and y'all's support in allowing us to use the park. It meant a lot. Well, if history is an Brian. example in Arable County, you'll, you have the capacity to get a lot more than 25 balloons up there. I mean, it, yeah. that, that, that event in Arable was huge. Yeah, every well, year I was guys. there. Yeah, I appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, just a reminder that your main motion is pending and does need a vote for the board. Okay, thank you. We do have a pending motion. We have a second. Any further discussion about the motion itself? That's establishing the second Seven weekend weeks. in September yes, sir. as the Alco Vets Balloon mm -hmm. Festival. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you.
Thank you, guys. I also want to recognize and thank Ryan Baker and Jason and all, all you guys and the Sheriff's Department particularly. Uh, they just did a, well, the entire county governmental entity uh, was involved and uh, just a real success. Thank you. Okay. Um, guess you're going to do this one, or is I am. Excellent. I'll give it a go. <laughs> how do you say that? How do you say that? I've been asking people how to pronounce okay. that name. Sorry, but I guess not. <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioner. Staff is requesting permission this morning to purchase uh, a parcel that surrounds the closed Swepsonville um, landfill property. It's approximately one acre and um, we are proposing to purchase it for the tax value, the 2022 tax value, that's $79,684. Funding will come from your 22, fiscal year 22-23 landfill budget, and then we'll do a budget transfer once this has been approved. So motion to purchase with the direction of funding to come from the landfill budget is the request this morning. Are there any questions the staff can answer for you? why do we need this we are just simply trying to be proactive about creating a buffer um, for environmental protection for future generations gotcha i'll make the motion second any further discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. it's unanimous thank, thank you thank you okay Ms. Hinkley. Good morning, commissioners. You all asked legal to look into the options legally available to the board based on um, Mr. Walker's expressed concerns. Specifically, he's asked the board to enact a TARP ordinance um, mandating TARPs on vehicles to prevent trash from falling out of vehicles, transporting that trash to the landfill. I just wanted to note that county staff has been working extensively to address Mr. Walker's concerns through education and signage. Mr. Walker has been a part of those conversations specifically about signs and sign placement as well. Um, legally, there are several North Carolina general statutes that address load requirements for vehicles on North Carolina roadways, as well as a statute that addresses littering. The penalties range from an infraction to a felony, and they carry extensive monetary fines, and some allow or require community service for violations of those statutes. Additionally, the Almance County Solid Waste Ordinance also requires franchise vehicles operating under an agreement with the county to be operated in a way that essentially prevents the trash from escaping from those vehicles. So that being the case, there are really three options that the county could take. One would be to enact a local ordinance without a criminal penalty associated with it. The second would to be to enact an ordinance with a criminal penalty attached and note that <coughs> Doing something like that would require at least two meetings after an ordinance is drafted. The third, which is what legal would recommend that the county um, pursue, is to continue to enforce existing laws. We feel like this would be the best option because there are already extensive laws and regulations related to this subject. Um, it's questionable whether another law or local ordinance would work to fix the problem that already exists, even though there's existing laws on the subject. And the county could continue and even ramp up its education and signage efforts to let residents know that Alliance County is serious about this issue. Do you all have any questions? There's already existing TARP law on the books, correct? There is a North Carolina general statute that regulates that vehicles should be moved in a way that essentially prevents trash or substances, other substances that are carried, which could include like rock and things like that from spilling out of the vehicles as they're traveling on North Carolina roadways. But it doesn't specifically identify tarping, right? It's it does not specifically. Tying it down. Correct. It doesn't require tarping, but it requires vehicles to be moved in a way that would prohibit that. I encountered another one. Deborah, I didn't stop them. Now, Deborah's on the phone. <laughs> I promised you. her I wouldn't do that again. Um, this one stopped in front of me because uh, a couple of bags of trash had flown. I don't know why I seem to have 
a propensity for running up on trucks, dumping trash in the middle of the road. But uh, this was a gentleman and his wife, and they, they they encountered a tractor trailer coming toward them. And when it came toward them, they had a couple of large sheets of cardboard behind them, or in the back of the truck, and the trash was on top of it. And they put bungee cords over it to tie it down. And we all know bungee cords will give or not not hold sometimes. So right when it when the the, the back graph from that tractor trailer went by, it just lifted the the uh, cardboard up. Tra the black bags of trash flew off right in the middle of '87. Mm -hmm. So uh, DOT was evidently right behind me because they stopped and helped them pick it all up. But uh, um, I'm kind of struggling with this thing because I've talked with uh, Mr. Walker a number of times about it, and we do need to do something. Uh, I don't know if it's just enforcement. But identifying the methods to be tied down. I mean, everybody's doing it a different way, and uh, and of course there are a lot of people that aren't doing it at all. So uh, they're just throwing stuff in the back of a truck, taking off. Um, you get 70 miles an hour down the interstate. That's a lot of wind. That's, that's more wind than we encountered from the uh, from the storm this weekend when you're driving down the interstate without anything over the bed of your truck or a flatbed. So. Stuff will, that kind of wind will pick just about anything up and throw it out of the back of a truck. So, but I'm struggling with what to do. I mean, uh, one of the recommendations is, uh, looks like maybe a, a, a local ordinance at the state level. It would be at the local level. It would not be at the state level. There are some questions about a local act, um, but well, there's yes. questionable it's a questionable area whether constitutionally counties can enact a local act related to trash based on the language of the Constitution. So because of that ambiguity, I would not advise going that route if you decide to take action in any manner. Yes. Mr. Trevor, do you if have I, a question? This is Deborah. If I could just add to what Reagan okay. said, uh, while you could, and, and I agree with Reagan, discussion and recommendation to you but even if you pass a local ordinance the constitutional issue aside uh, it would not be something that the state highway patrol on a federal highway meaning i-40 is going to enforce so it's not correct. going to correct what you've witnessed steve just so you're aware of that mr turner i think mr last yeah I'm going to be pretty simple about this. How can we get things changed if we don't make a change in the, in the law? I think if you're looking at what is already on the existing statutes regarding littering, even the example that um, Mr. Walker gave today really could be targeted as a littering problem. So if you enact, or I don't know that enacting anything additionally would give you more or different um, Kind of buy-in from citizens and what already exists so i think the county's efforts in putting up more extensive signage letting um, county residents know that we're serious about enforcing um, littering violations and things like that would allow you to capitalize on what already exists on the books and take it seriously in a method that you know word would certainly get out that alamance county is taking this issue seriously and enforcing what already exists um, which could then alleviate the problem. I think the concern is that if you have another ordinance that's essentially doing what mm -hmm. is already allowed to be done based on existing laws, it's questionable whether if all of these laws and the existing ordinance is not working, whether just enacting another ordinance is going to be more effective than enforcing what can, can is in we place. increase the fines? Um, for you could not increase the fines for the littering uh statute because it's a state statute um, the local ordinance relates to franchise vehicles and essentially the penalty for that is franchise vehicles losing their ability to operate under a franchise with alamance county so unless you enacted something different you would not be able to increase the fines i will tell you that the fines range from about 250 to two thousand dollars um and come with like i said various um potential opportunities for community service mr chairman 
Oh, hang on just a minute. Mr. Turner. Uh, my, my thoughts are generally that we probably don't need additional regulation because we have laws on the books that cover it, and I don't, I don't know that additional regulation without anything else is going to do much, but uh, I think we need an education and an enforcement focus. I Certainly. think perhaps in conjunction with the Sheriff's PAO office, mm -hmm. uh, we could we could put together a, a you know, public relations campaign to, to make sure we, we get this, and then give it some time and come back and see what's happened. That's what I would say. Mr. Thompson. I just think it's real shame we have to always have to rewrite something because we're not doing what we're supposed to start with. If we did, we wouldn't need a jail. So um, it just amazes me that we just um, have all these ordinances on the book and people still don't follow them. Um, Y'all know my issue with trash and hoarding. And um, it's, just, um, it's just disobedience. That's all it is. And if we have to keep writing laws to make the laws that aren't being obeyed even stronger, you know, I got somebody who likes Bud Light because they hit my corner right across from the school every weekend. And I thought, maybe I get my son to come over there and put some IEDs in the ground so whenever they throw it, it just goes boom. I mean, it's very frustrating, Mr. Walker. I know it's very, it's very disrespectful. And I remember the old Indian chief that was in the canoe and he's ruining the tears coming out of his face. And we're just becoming a hot mess as a humankind because we don't want to follow rules and we have the right to do anything we think, but it doesn't make it right. And so um, until we start learning how to behave and do the right thing, not as kindergartners, but as full-grown adults, you're going to be up here every meeting complaining about the same thing, because I have complaints too, and then they don't get done either. We all feel that way about different things. So um, I just don't want our commissioners to just keep putting it to another meeting or this, that, something. We need to make a decision what we're going to do, and we need to stand by our citizens. So. What would it cost? I'm really directing this question to you, possibly, or uh, maybe Richard, or I'm not sure who. What type of money do we need to, one, have an educational component, two, do a signage component, and three, help law enforcement? Because the laws are already on the books to prohibit what's ongoing now. Um, and Richard, my guess would be a lot of these things, like the mattresses sitting out on, on 87, that's not somebody, that's not blowing off a truck, typically. That's somebody just throwing Literally. trash out. Um, and those sort of things can and should be stopped. Um, and Sheriff Johnson, again, we keep leaning on you to enforce what's already on the books. Um, and I know you don't have anything else to do, but <laughs> that's supposed to be funny. You can laugh. But <laughs> we, we don't mind trying to help where we can. We're receiving over 2,000 calls per week. And <clears throat> you're talking about uh, 12 people supposed to be on shift. You've got one, you know, a couple in training, ports going on. It, it makes it tough, believe me. We, and we have a guy, we picked up over 300 pounds of trash on the quarter road going to the dump. Something does need to be done. Uh, and, you know, we have to take the calls, the most serious calls. And believe me, I love to catch everybody throwing out trash because we did uh, more road here in the city. Three days later, went back through there and you thought, you know, you didn't think you'd done anything. And we picked up over 300 pounds of trash there. Uh, I love catch some of these people. Do you have a recommendation on the amount of money? I'm getting ready to make a motion that we continue to enforce the existing laws as opposed to adding additional, just compounding what we already have, but setting aside a set of um, monies as necessary for signage, education, things of that sort. And would it be possible, and this is part of my question, uh, for local Alabama County Sheriff's Department, the municipalities and so forth, to actually go into the schools? I know when I was growing up, um, you did not throw trash out of the window. It did not happen. Uh, my parents would be extremely upset had that happened. Now you see it happening every day. Uh, so maybe just education as a component, but do we need to set aside 
a block of money to do this is the question. So the signage has been taken care of. If you'll look on the memo that Reagan has referenced, we've had several meetings with DOT. We allowed Mr. Walker to come up with uh, locations for the signage. Our GIS department created a map for sign placement that we've delivered to DOT. So we are waiting on DOT from the state to come and actually place the signs. There are no littering signs. We feel like that'll be an extensive um, effort to, to cover within a five mile radius of the landfill. We've also detailed some of the sheriff's efforts. He has sent out mm -hmm. his employees. They have collected significant amounts of trash. So the educational component, I don't have an estimate of what that would cost. I think whatever amount <coughs> the board would like us to put forward in educational efforts, we can make that happen either with the schools or in some other ways. And part of the SROs, I assume, could be a component to that. Sheriff, is that correct? Are you talking about teaching in the school? Yes, sir. That would certainly be up to the schools, you know, for our officer to be able to come in and teach kids training. So we need to meet with uh, our new superintendent and encourage that as a component. I'm to happy to deliver that message to the superintendent that we would like some education on litter. <laughs> let, me, let me say something. If the commissioners are willing to put a little pot of money, some of my people will be, I'm sure, will be willing to come in and work to try to catch some of these people. But we need to take, if we're going to do it, we need to take a solid stance on it and make believers out of some of these people. Yes, That's sir. Right. I totally agree. By the way, uh, in our packets, which you folks out in the audience may or may not have seen, you obviously can go online and see these, uh, usually the Wednesday, certainly by the Thursday, preceding all of our meetings. And uh, this, what Ms. York has just talked about, the DOT with the signage and so forth, is in our packet. So yeah. if we as commissioners knew that already, uh, this car is already highlighted is. <laughs> but, but in any event, uh, a lot of that is still ongoing. Mr. Walker, do you, do you want to make one additional comment? Yeah, I want to add something. <clears throat> I work, started working in state since 1972. Worked for almost 30 years. You put all the signs up in Alamance County, you want to put up, but they ain't going to do a bit of good. Signs ain't gonna do no good. You got to find people where it's gonna get in their pocketbook and then they gonna <coughs> word of mouth is gonna travel like wildfire. They gonna tell everybody in the neighborhood about it. Now let me explain how that can happen. With the Alamance News is the only news agency I think we have <coughs> present today. Thomas, is that correct? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so yeah, Burlington, Times, I don't Times think you get Burlington paper no more, do you? <laughs> So Times News is not here, but they need to talk about this meeting and the fact that we are going to be enforcing That's uh, right. that. And then you folks in the audience, not just law enforcement, but Mr. Walker, talk to our judges. Yeah, because you judge all are, the schools now in Madison County, they ain't going to do no good. Well, let me, let me again emphasize what Ms. Uh, Reagan has pointed out. North Carolina General Statute 20, the General cha Chapter 20, is motor vehicles. Chapter 14 is the criminal statutes, and they are already, all this is already covered under Chapter 14, criminal, and or Chapter 20, motor vehicle. We've got to enforce it, but we also need to have our judges to make sure to reinforce financially, penalty-wise. Uh, and they're somewhat restricted in what they can and cannot do. But I would encourage you to contact our judges as well uh, to help reinforce our efforts. Uh, and Ms. York, how soon do you think DOT, any guesstimation on signage? Signage may or may not help. It can't hurt. We reached out in August and are still waiting for a time frame on the signage. Mr. Chairman, press release from the counties pointing out an increased emphasis on enforcement would, uh, would, wouldn't hurt either. Happy to do that. Mr. Chairman, quick question for the Sheriff. Uh, Sheriff, 
you mentioned a pot of money. Are you talking about like uh, overtime for directed efforts on enforcement? Yes, sir. And they, and they would work nothing but that. Their time but that. They wouldn't get called off to another call or anything. That would be their, their total control is trash. Do you have a, a trash police? Do you have a recommendation <laughs> on, on what that pot of money would be? Or what, what would be required to have an impact? Well, you know, you could put one person down there near the, the, the uh, gum, but, you know, trash is going everywhere else, too. So, I mean, that would certainly be up to commissioners. But I can tell you, if you caught two or three people and he got out to, right. to find stuff, people are going to start thinking twice. May I just say there's two, you're looking at two problems. One is you're frustrated about people who are purposely littering, but the people going through the dump are law-abiding citizens carrying their trash to the dump. Along the way, it's accidentally blowing out. So that's the educational piece that you're trying to do. So the unless there's a reason to tell deputies they have to stop somebody before they get into Austin Quarter into the the dump, then if they don't see the bag of trash fly out, there's no violation. Right. Right. So that's you got two issues, and so you got the litterers, and then you got the people just driving from northern Alamance County to southern Alamance County to carry their trash, and so that's the that's the piece, and that's what Richard Hill they've been talking about tarping down there for for months, and Bruce, so uh, that's part of the educational piece is that you tarp it. Or you tie it down, people are tying it down, but it's falling off. So Austin Quarter is just where trash trucks come in and pieces blow out of it. It's because that's where all the trash in the county comes to. Sheriff, sure, what would ten thousand dollars buy? You know what name? What would ten thousand dollars buy? Well, you figure probably uh, thirty dollars an hour. Maybe we can use some retired people that uh, come back. That's still, you know, maybe thirty dollars an hour. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you've been having career <coughs> fairs to try and hire people because you're so short, right? Yes, ma'am. So I don't know where you're going to get these people who aren't there to do this now. Whenever we've got major crime, murders, overdoses, name it, here. So um, I just hope we see the big picture here is for all of a sudden this is a priority when our jail staff is short and we need people out in the field in patrol and we're still trying to hire three specialized detectives, right? So let's just look at the big picture here. And like I said, the only thing I'd do is look at some of the people, if we did, okay. and bring, that have officially retired but still hold their status as an officer. So, Ms. Reagan, I assume your uh, recommendation. <coughs> Okay. She's no. not there. She's not right there. Ms. Oakley, uh, your recommendation is that we not take any official action, but encourage staff management uh, to one, do a press release, two, take the additional action as necessary to particularly educate and work with the state on the DOT signage and things of that sort. Yes. That's your recommendation. The county would recommend that continuing or regulations and um, statutes that already exist continue to be enforced as opposed to enacting something new. Mr. <laughs> are you recommending an amount of money for the sheriff's department? Yeah, I, I mean if if we directed ten thousand dollars to the sheriff's department to this effort it'd be three hundred and thirty three hours of, of police effort or you know deputy effort just on littering. I think that's reasonable. So if that requires a motion, I'll make that motion. We direct from the general fund if necessary three ten thousand dollars toward overtime for the sheriff's department over the next two months to uh focus 333 hours on literally we may have that in lap salaries do we sure do what sir would we have that in lap salaries yeah that's what i was going to say that's what i was going to say too is that it's probably a special appropriation from fund balance for this purpose I'll second that motion. I just have one response. Uh, I think it's a good idea. I think what you do in here is a good idea. We just need to see results. Uh, like if you are going to have 333 hours of uh, overtime for your deputies, just can you r report back to us what you what you get for those 333 hours? I mean, what your deputies are incurring, what they're looking at, what they're seeing on a daily basis, just to get an idea 
of how this money is working. Yes, sir. And I would request that if you find mattresses and other out in the ditches, wherever, that deputies determine if there's any uh, information as to under ownership. Well, I know one time uh, I got complaints out on the Governor Scott Road, and I went in and dug through bags of trash and found a, a name, and I went to the door, uh, that address, and I explained to them, uh, be charged or clean that road up, and two days later, you could eat off that road. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Accountability works. It really does. Do it's supposed to. Accountability is really supposed to work. That's the hurt. <laughs> And I have called the sheriff's department to come down on Mount Willen Road and dug through the trash and give the sheriff's department the name, and they went to see him. And so, Thomas, if we could ask you, possibly, <clears throat> to indicate that if you find trash and find identification, contact law enforcement. Let me, let me Did say you say that. Thomas? Thomas is out now. Geraldo. Get rid of trash. <laughs> 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 I'm going to look at it. Yeah, 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 I'm going to look at it. Okay, we, we have a pending motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I would say too that in addition to that, this motion we would need to encourage magistrates and the judges to enforce it once it's once the deputy's taken the time to issue a citation that it be enforced instead of just sloughed off. Otherwise, it's not going to have any impact. So I can tell you, we can't. You know, I can't tell judges know. what to do. What to do? What to do? I can only ask. But the press. Can report it. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> the one time I asked, for, I'm wanting a comment from Thomas, and he doesn't respond. Well, he didn't eat his booties this morning. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, folks, that is our agenda down to the county uh, manager's report. I have nothing further. All Thank right. You. Uh, commissioner's comments. Ms. Thompson, do you want to start? Um, I just went to Harnett County last week with um, Health Director Tony and the Veterans Service Office Director Tammy, and we uh, shadowed their Veterans Court. Their courthouse is magnificent. Uh, this program is in its ninth year. They have um, veterans applying for this program from Durham, Raleigh, all over the state. There are four in the state, and it was absolutely an amazing program. Um, they're going to have their ninth anniversary, so to speak, on the November the 9th, and I'm going down there to see that. Um, it's just another special thing and their director who was a uh, Afghanistan veteran special forces and did uh, secret service for President Obama um, was amazing um, I, I've been a long time since I've sat in a room with such honor it was just it was something uh, but anyway um, and he was telling <coughs> us that it's words come in I spoke to Amy Gailey about this too that recovery courts are being reconsidered to be funded because of the mental health crisis and drug addiction crisis is kicking our country to the curb. And so um, that's just one of those other things that I've been supportive that um, we haven't really looked into in, as far as what we should. And hopefully we will um, with the opioid crisis settlement or whatever money we can find because I know we had talked about this prior to Heidi getting here. I just think it's very important that we look at the root cause of situations like this and. Um, and not just think construction is going to fix a problem because it takes the entire wraparound services like when I went to Surrey County and saw the fantastic work they're doing and uh, Zane who's their director of Veterans Court said he would be more than glad to come up here and speak to my fellow commissioners to uh, enlighten all of us about the importance of veterans programs that have been to deployment and come back and their lives are just in shambles and they make bad choices and um, they become taxpayers that become very productive citizens because um, they certainly were when they chose to go to war for us. So that's um, that's about it. Thank you. Mr. Lashley. I have none. Thank you. Mr. Carter. I have anything else this morning? Mr. Turner. Quickly, uh, Ms. York, I understand uh, what, there's been a lot of talk in the community about uh, school capacity. Um, the bond projects are coming close to an end. Um, I understand that ABSS is going to 
plan to come to the board. Is that is that going to happen soon to talk about capital? Yes, they are planning to come at your next meeting on the 17th. You'll hear a report from them and a request to use some of their capital reserve funds for some additional projects. Okay. I think it would also be helpful to the community to know uh, where we stand on school capacities for each school, not just high schools, but okay. elementary and middle. Uh, so hopefully we can have, we can talk about some kind of strategic plan for you know where schools go in the next you know not year but five years. Okay. I think that would be really. I'll helpful. make sure they'll cover that on the seventeenth as well. And you said that's capital projects that they want to do. Um, so they're going to give you an update on the bond projects and show you some slides um, and let you know where the projects stand. And then they also are going to make a request to the board for some additional funds to be appropriated from their capital reserve fund and a list of projects which uh, <laughs> Commissioner Turner had requested a couple meetings back that they wanted to use those funds on. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I don't have anything additionally either. Um, County Attorney. Nothing other than what was already discussed. Thank you. Right. Do we have a motion? As to, to adjourn. adjourn. So moved. Second. A motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We adjourn. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com. TVNC.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.